this video I want to show you guys how to use a uh, current sensing donut with uh, Arduino and I'm going to actually show you a little uh, project I did for someone. Um, these are relatively cheap. I got this on AliExpress. I'll link it down below. I think it was around two three dollars. And it's basically a current sensor. Uh, so this will only work with AC current. Uh, and it also has a little op amp here uh, which you can actually adjust so you can boost up the strength of the signal uh, to make it easier to detect it with the Arduino. So let me right quick show you what I did with this. So basically I have this widget going. Um, I need to detect whether a pump, a small pump, uh, is activated by a by a completely different system which we do not want to touch at all so we're basically gonna cut one of the pumps wires take it through here and turn on a much bigger pump uh, downhill from from that one downstream from that one um, this is quite exaggerated I got this two relay module uh, you should be fine with just one or even the smaller type um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, this was seven bucks and we really wanted to never fail. So yeah, why not? It was worth the extra cost. So this is basically a, an iPhone wire taking plus five volts and a data wire, an analog wire from this module. Um, this actually has two outputs and I could not for the life of me. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, this one has though. No. Just so you know, I'm not crazy. So this one actually has two outs and I have no idea. They're, they're basically the same. Anyway, so I took the, um, the out, plugged it into the Arduino, into the analog pin, and we have a digital pin controlling the relay. That is completely all there is to it. Um, could actually open this and show you guys inside. All right, so yeah, basically I have some pass-throughs which I uh, hot snotted in here to make them uh, not come inside. Uh, for massive uh, pulling power, uh, I did put some some zip ties. Um, yeah, this is just a regular uh, a five volt two amp supply. Uh, I think I got this from eBay. Uh, you could definitely find these, and I very much enjoy how it's done so it has some common mode filtering on the input it has an inductor on the output and a shit ton of caps actually the small one I put in there but yeah it should be fine and some feedback so it should really be okay um, doesn't get too warm in standby either so it's it's quite good uh, the Arduino I also stuck down here and wrote some shit on here right just why not um, the relay board I just stuck down with two screws because here in Germany the screws are very expensive at the store. I, got, I get them. So I think it's 20 or 50 cents per piece. So this nut is 50 cents or 20 cents. I think it's 20 cents. But in any case, I pay almost one euro for two screws and two nuts. And this will never move. This will be fastened to a wall which will not vibrate or anything. So it is fine. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, just go to the code because that is the most uh, interesting part. And I'll show you what makes this stick. Actually, let's uh, let's do a quick demo first. All right. So for the demo, we have our compliant live connection over there. Uh, we have the current donut uh, sensing what current is passing through this wire. And basically, the logic is pretty simple. We're gonna go check it out. There's like 20 lines of code, so it's really not much. Uh, first of all, we have this LED that's blinking every 10 evaluations of the current. Um, situation just to, just to let people know that this thing is actually on and working um, and yeah basically when we detect current it's going to turn on and once it's been on for one second it's going to turn on the relays and once it's off it's going to wait to be off for at least 10 seconds until it turns the relay off this is just the logic we decided on uh, for this particular application so let's uh, check this out all right and so long as the, the load is on, the, the thing we're measuring is on, these will be on. So these are basically following it. And once we stop it, it's going to stay on for 10 more seconds. And then it's also going to go on. Let's uh, wait for that to happen. All right. It's probably less than 10 seconds anyway. Probably five or something. Also something that I have implemented is if you have a tiny 
spike of current, then uh, we will not turn the relays on. We'll just assume it's a random fluke. So let's say. So let's go on over to the computer and uh, show show the code. Okay, so we're here on the computer. Uh, first of all, I uh, define some uh, macros. I think they're called. Uh, this is basically just telling the compiler to always change this word for this word, this word for this word. So basically, uh, when I'm initializing, for example, this boolean variable to off, the first thing the compiler does is it changes it to um, to false. So it is completely equivalent, writing off or false anywhere below this line, basically. Um, I have all my variables globally, so this is also good practice for microcontrollers. Uh, you want to keep it as simple as possible, and having global variables is simpler than having them local in some function. Because if they are local, for example, if they would be local in this function, uh, they would basically have to be assigned some space on most likely the stack every time this function is called and then every time this point is reached uh, freed up from the stack so it's just a lot of extra steps and we really don't need them I'm, I'm using how much I'm using an 10 percent of the RAM so that's that's really fine and if I disable the serial monitor stuff um, then it should be even even cheaper RAM wise. So let's see, 10%, 1% of dynamic RAM. So 9% was the serial uh, communications. Okay, so uh, I've def defined the variables. You can not mind them, just we'll, we'll see them down in the code. So first of all, uh, what we're doing is assigning the relay pin as an output. So I actually forgot this the first time I ran this. And it was disastrous, so I almost gave the guy on, on AliExpress with the relays a bad review. I just, it's really bad. So the, the, what happens is the pin still is driven, even if you don't define it as an output. But it is driven through a pretty high, uh, high resistance, right? Uh, from what I could, could ascertain, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but what would happen is if the pin was floating, then it would get to 5 volts and down to zero. But if it was connected to the relay, which has some transistors, some buffering transistors, I mean, it will draw very little current, right? So it is properly done. The little current it was requiring was enough to bring the voltage down to, I don't know, I think 1.5 volts when the pin was high and point something when, when it was low. So if you don't do this, the pins will still work, but they will be they will be incredibly weak. I'm just blinking a little bit at the start, right? Why not? Uh, and then, yeah, this is the business end. So what we're doing is we have a maximum reading and a minimum reading. And we're doing this because um, we're doing this because we want to uh, to basically see if there's any current. We we don't care exactly how much it is, so we measure every millisecond. And this looks kind of like this. So I'm printing the maximum value and the minimum value and the actual one of the measurements that was used for computing these uh, maximums and minimums. Um, and it looks kind of like this, right? So this would be the lowest power on my soldering iron. And here I'm increasing the power and you can see that both the maximum and the minimum increase, but the minimum actually uh, is a bit more linear, so to say. So the maximum tops out a bit earlier than the minimum going down to zero. Actually, it doesn't go down to zero, but anyway. And um, yeah, you can see the value, right? Because this is alternating current and our uh, current sensing module isn't doing anything fancy, we basically get positive and negative values with respect to the average, right? So we're above and below average, depending on where in the cycle we measure the pin, right? Hope this is clear enough. I'm pretty sure it should be. And so basically I'm interested in how big this gap is, right, from, from here to here. And if it's bigger than a certain threshold, then I can surely say that yes, there is a current flowing and it isn't just 
uh, it isn't just some interference. For example, here we had some interference from something. And here we have some kind of level shift even. So we don't care about that. We just care what is the difference between the largest value and the smallest value. And I'm doing this and I'm achieving this through this uh, method. And um, it seems that 100 points was enough. So this was done with 100 points just to make the serial monitor move quicker. Uh, I might actually leave it at that, to be honest. So let's, let's leave it at 100. And so basically we're measuring 100 milliseconds, storing the minimum and the maximum. And then um, if it is bigger than some value, so here it should be 200 and 600. So it's like 400. So it's easily more than 300. And as I said, this was on the lowest setting on my uh, iron. The highest one was, what is this, 100 to, let's call it, uh, let's call it 700. So like 500. No, 100 to 700 is 600. Um, so somewhere around that, that ballpark. Um, and the highest this will be, the higher this will be, the more extraneous noise you'll filter out. Because if you put this current donut next to a power line, it will actually pick something up, right? And you will get some values right around the, around the mean, which did happen in my case. Uh, and that's pretty much all. So basically when my current is above a certain threshold, I'm switching the relay and here I'm doing a bit of a... Uh, hmm. I will call this rather fancy. So um, when we're already in the state, so this will be this this loop function. If you're not familiar with Arduino, is basically you can exchange void loop with while true. So this is executed over and over and over and over and over again. Always, it'll always keep looping through what it, whatever is written in here. Um, and so basically, if, if our threshold is higher or lower than, if our measurement is higher or lower than our, our threshold, we will constantly keep saying, turn the relay off, turn the relay off, turn the relay off, turn the relay off. And what happens here if, is we remember what, what the relay state is, and at the beginning it is off. So we do initialize it to off. And if it is already in the state that we want it to be, then we'll just record the time of the last request, kind of, and return basically, even if this is a void function, so it doesn't have, a, if I would say here return 5, then that would be rather illegal. I think it still compiles, but, right, the, the void functions do not have a return value, but if you do call return, it'll basically break out of the function. So, stop executing right here, not even bother with uh, the rest of the of the thing, which we don't have to, right? We don't have to change the state of the relay if it's already in the state we want it to be in. However, the first time, right, say at the beginning, we're calling it turn it off, turn it off, turn it, but it is already off, right? The first time we say, all right, turn it on, what'll happen? We'll have this time saved here. This is, by the way, the system time accounts in milliseconds from zero to whatever the hell a 32-bit variable can store, so 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. That'll be milliseconds uh, divided by 1,000. That'll be seconds divided by 60 minutes divided by 60 hours divided by 24 days. So what the hell is going on here? 2 to the power of 31. No, wait. Crap, what am I doing? So this, so seconds, uh, minutes, hours, days, so 49 days. Yeah, that is quite impressive. So basically you can have delays as long as 49 days, apparently. I hope I'm not wrong. Usually whenever I do some calculations on the fly, uh, it ends up disastrous. Anyway, so as we were saying, we've called it with off and we've recorded the time, right? And now the first time we, we call it, we say turn it on, right? We'll have had this time saved, right? We will not change this time again because desired state is on, right? We are sure that the relay state is off because otherwise we would have stopped here completely and we never would have gotten to this point. Um, so if the desired state is on, uh, 
All right, so when the desired state is on, uh, we'll wait three seconds, right? So if three seconds didn't pass since we changed our mind that we want the relay on rather than off or the other way around, then we will not do anything. And if the stimulus stops happening, so if the offset goes back down and we'll, we'll say relay off, then it'll again start recording the last time and return and we will not have changed the relay state. If three seconds do pass and we do have the relay on, then we will actually turn it on with this function and remember that we have turned it on. I think theoretically you could be able to read the state of the relay, but I don't think the Arduino environment offers any facility for this. Uh, and also we're resetting the time, right? And uh, yeah, that's really all there is to it. Actually, we also have this uh, LED blinker, so uh, it's, it's always nice to know if something is working and if we wouldn't have this on, then the LED would either be on or off and you really wouldn't know if it is actually actively checking, right? So uh, basically every nine times, every 10 times, it goes through this entire um, this entire loop function. Uh, it will change the state of the LED briefly for 50 milliseconds. So if it's off, it'll turn it on for 50 milliseconds and then off again. And if it's uh, if it's on, then it'll turn it off for 50 milliseconds and then on again. And this really is all there is to it. So not a whole lot. All right, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And yeah, have a good one.